the tier 2 cities have now become uh, sub nucleuses for actually the tier 3 cities the majority of these home buyers are uh, from within the city who are looking to either upgrade or shift to better amenities and facilities additionally we are also witnessing some out migration from the tier 3 to the tier 2 cities you know for the want of better social and physical infrastructure however the pandemic also brought in uh, you know a change in consumer behavior you know with increased preference uh, demand for bigger homes uh, you know demand for suburban homes and satellite or tier 2 cities the yamuna expressway industrial development authority ida has launched new group housing and commercial plot schemes along the expressway The authority aims to generate revenue of rupees 500 crore from the two schemes which have been launched after a gap of 9 years. Hello everyone. Namaskar, salam, sat sri akal, vanakkam. We are back with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by housing.com. This is India's first real estate focused podcast. It brings to you updates, views and insights about the reality sector, an explainer on a chosen subject and a deep dive into an industry trend or topic. In this podcast we explore the growing optimism and immense opportunities emerging in tier 2 cities. Join us as we uncover the trends, data and insights behind the surge in online property searches, the impact of the pandemic and the strategies adopted by industry experts to cater to the evolving needs of the home buyers in these exciting markets. To unlock the trends, we'll be joined by our special guests, Mr. Amit Masaldan, business head housing.com and Ms. Ankita Sood, head of research housing.com. The Yamuna Expressway Industrial Development Authority (IDA) has launched new group housing and commercial plot schemes along the expressway. The authority aims to generate revenue of rupees 500 crore from the two schemes, which have been launched after a gap of 9 years. The last IDA sector group housing scheme was launched in 2014. In the group housing scheme, three plots have been put up for auction and interested parties can submit applications from May 5th, 2023. The last date to submit applications is June 5, 2023, and the e-auction will be conducted on June 23, 2023. Two plots of 45,000 square meter and one of 60,000 square meter at sector 22D will be auctioned under the scheme. According to EDA officials, the reserved rate of bidding is rupees 33,825 per square foot for a plot of 60,000 square meters. While it is rupees thirty thousand seven hundred and fifty per square foot for a forty-five thousand square meter plot, the authority expects to garner around rupees four hundred and seventy-nine crore through the auction of the plots. These plots are in proximity to the Eastern Peripheral Expressway, upcoming Noida International Airport, and the proposed Film City. Under the EDA Commercial Plot Allotment Scheme, seven commercial plots have been put for auction at Sector Twenty-Two A. The scheme offers two commercial plots of an area of 112 square meters, four plots of 124 square meters, and one plot of 140 square meters. The reserve price for the 112 square meter plot is rupees 2.87 crore, while the reserve price for plots of 124 square meter area is rupees 3.18 crore. The reserve price of the 140 square meter plot has been fixed at rupees 3.59 crore. The revenue potential from the auction of these plots is estimated to be at least rupees 22.11 crore. The authority plans to accept payments in parts instead of paying the property cost up front in 90 days to benefit the buyers. The applicants are required to pay 10% earnest money at the time of application. Successful bidders must pay another 30% of the total cost at the time of plot allotment. The remaining 60% would have to be paid over 3 years in 6 installments According to data from housing.com Lucknow Jaipur and Indore are emerging as top cities for buying a home Online property searches for apartments houses and commercial spaces are growing rapidly in cities such as Ahmedabad Pune Chandigarh Lucknow and Coimbatore indicating expanding opportunities in the real estate industry beyond large metropolitan regions The pandemic has accelerated digital adoption and online demand leading to remarkable growth of over 100% in online property searches on housing.com since the physical operations commenced in 2021 these trends are expected to continue providing developers and real estate agents with a significant opportunity to cater to the needs of home buyers in tier 2 cities coimbatore has become 
a popular residential hub due to its growing industrial base, high living standards, focus on quality healthcare services, and popularity as a residential hub for senior living and second homes. This has attracted both domestic and non-resident Indian home buyers and investors to the city. Lucknow and Chandigarh have also witnessed significant increases in online property surges. The surge activity in Chandigarh is even higher than the national average, as well as in the cities of Ludhiana and Amritsar. The data indicates a lot of potential in Tier 2 cities, with online property searches for apartments growing at a faster pace than for independent homes. Overall, the data suggests that Tier 2 cities are a promising investment opportunity for real estate developers and agents. With the growing popularity of online property searches, developers can leverage digital platforms to reach a wider audience and cater to the needs of home buyers in these cities. We had the privilege of speaking with Amit Masaldan, business head of housing.com, to gain insights into the significant opportunity that exists for the company in Tier 2 cities. Amit shed light on the company's plans to expand its operations and cater to the growing demand for online property searches in these regions. Additionally, we spoke to Ankita Sood, head of research for housing.com, proptiger.com and makan.com. Ankita provided a deep dive into the IDS index, which tracks almost 42 cities across the country and helped us understand the emerging trends and opportunities in the real estate industry in these cities. Let's listen in. Hello and a warm welcome, Amit and Ankita. Delighted to have you for this show. Thank you, Gaurav. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Gaurav. Uh, Amit, first to you. Briefly tell us about Tier 2 presence of housing.com. How has housing.com's business fared in Tier 2 cities? Amid the pandemic, considering the majority of your operations in Tier 2 cities were launched during this time, and despite facing a few challenges, the industry has shown significant growth in the past year and a half. Amit? Yeah, thanks, Gaurav. Thanks for the question. Uh, you know, we've, we've had uh, plans to extend our presence in Tier 2 markets for quite some time. Uh, but, you know, we initially wanted to focus uh, on achieving scale and leadership in the tier one markets uh, before we moved to tier two, uh, you know, and subsequently, as we all know, the pandemic uh, kind of put a halt on our uh, expansion plans. Um, however, uh, you know, interestingly, the pandemic also brought in, uh, you know, a change in consumer behavior, uh, you know, with increased preference, uh, demand for bigger homes, uh, you know, demand for suburban homes and satellite or tier two cities. Uh, so it kind of presented us with an opportunity to expand our presence. Uh, so we entered first into, uh, you know, the top seven uh, uh, tier two markets, which were Chandigarh, Lucknow, Jaipur, uh, Nagpur, Nasik, Coimbatore and Vizag. Uh, and this we did in the period from July to August 21. Uh, you know, currently, as we speak, we have presence in uh, 10 cities. So we've added Indore, Goa and Madhutra uh, in that mix. Uh, and in these markets, you know, uh, uh, we, we are now present in these 10 cities uh, and our foray into these cities has been extremely uh, successful so far. Uh, thanks, Amit. Ankita, you know, as mentioned earlier, tier two cities are trending above the national average on housing.com's IRIS index. What are some of the discerning property search trends among tier two cities? Can you tell us more about the home buyers in these cities, Ankita? Sure, Gaurav. So uh, let me just first simply break down what the IRIS index is. Now, IRIS index is an index that tracks the high intent, high volume property search activity across India's 42 key cities. And, you know, I would say these are the drivers. These key cities are the drivers of the economy. You rightly said tier two cities are trending above the national average on our IRIS index and have also superseded the cumulative index of the top metros. Now, this only shows the interest in home buying in the smaller cities, as also rightly uh, cited by Amit, you know, and especially post the pandemic. Uh, just some brief insights on who are these home buyers. The majority of these home buyers are uh, from within the city who are looking to either upgrade or shift to better amenities and facilities. Additionally, we are also witnessing some out-migration from the Tier 3 to the Tier 2 cities, you know, for the want of better social and physical infrastructure. For example, uh, you know, the Chandigarh Tri-City area. Now, most of the people are coming within a driving radius of, uh, you know, a two hours drive from in and around, from Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh. 
So the tier two cities have now become, uh, you know, sub nucleuses for actually the tier three cities. Yeah, thanks, Ankita. Uh, Amit, what specific strategies does Housing. dot com have in place to continue expanding its presence and operations in tier two cities in India, both from buyers and sellers' perspective? Amit. Yeah. So uh, clearly, you know, on the buyer side, the first and foremost is uh, we need we ensure that. uh buyers have access to listing um and with listing uh, you know i basically mean that they have the widest choice uh, which is available to them in the market uh you know also we do a lot of work uh using tech to weed out uh, fake listings or listings uh, which are not uh, uh, you know in line with uh, what the market kind of uh, suggests are the rates in a particular uh, locality uh you know uh, so with this uh, uh, our our standing has been that in case if a person is looking for a house uh, for rental or for buying in tier 2 uh, you know the natural uh, place where he should kind of go to uh, is the housing platform where he gets uh, the best choice uh, on the seller side uh, uh, we have been working with sellers to create uh, you know customized product packaging which uh, you know has to be different across markets because as we know real estate is a very uh, uh, you know is a very localized business uh, what works in mumbai will not work in delhi and similarly for tier 2 you know you have to kind of approach every market uh, differently so what we've started is uh, you know a forum called uh, as a housing uh, partners meet uh where we uh, you know we are very keen on listening to uh, what our trade partners both agents and developers have to say uh it's a process it's a journey that we've started this year uh you know then we've conducted uh, a lot of these meets this year to kind of hear out uh what uh, the sellers on the platform are saying and how can we you know create more products uh, which which suit their requirement uh, in their own uh, markets Absolutely, uh, Ankita. To what extent would you attribute the rapid infrastructure development for the rise in demand for properties in India's tier two cities? Also, to what extent has the pandemic played a role in triggering the bullishness in property markets in these cities, Ankita? So, Gorav, absolutely, real estate. Uh, you know, for location is very important, and for a city to grow, connectivity is very important. so obviously the thrust on infrastructure has definitely made uh, the tier 2 cities game changer now this all of these activities infrastructure push was going on for some time and we are seeing the results now the smart city mission amrit bharat jn and urm uh, you know just to name a few they all paved the path for uh, you know development of trunk infrastructure in these smaller cities Uh, another important is the regional connectivity of course through roads but also you know the air connectivity plays a very very important part when uh, you know we look at connectivity for a city so the nub scheme uran uh, all of these have actually uh, connected all the tier 2 cities with the main cities with international connectivity all of this has improved uh, you know the business uh, environment in these cities and definitely has trickled down into more uh, economic opportunities which we all know thus translate into uh, you know property demand everything growing eventually translates has a ripple effect on the property market trends so infrastructure definitely has played a pivotal role and uh, you know if i specifically talk post the pandemic then working the hybrid work culture we saw many uh, people went back to their hometowns so they were looking for all of those amenities and facilities there as well so they bought uh, or you know they rented houses back in their hometowns as well i already highlighted the in migration from the tier 3 cities uh, that's also you know pushing the demand in our uh, tier 2 cities so definitely connectivity specifically air connectivity post pandemic we saw many of the tier 2 cities their air traffic has grown uh, you know two to three times so that says a lot of the interest levels in our tier 2 cities uh, amit how do you see the real estate market evolving in tier 2 cities in the coming years and what steps is housing.com taking to stay ahead of the curve and leverage these growth opportunities so i think the market uh, you know ankita touched upon and that, that uh, you know the important point that tier 2 markets are doing very well uh, we are seeing uh, growth in the market as far as our revenues are concerned 
uh, you know we are seeing a fabulous uh, close to a 200% growth uh, year on year growth uh, this year uh, in the tier 2 markets that we operate uh, you know we expect uh, a fast pace growth uh, obviously our uh, base is low so percentage is uh, in the initial years look high but we still expect at least a 50 to 60% uh, cagr over the next uh, 2 to 3 years uh, while we kind of uh, continue to expand our uh, operations uh, you know we are looking at uh, given that there is a lot of uh, interest in real estate in these markets uh, you know we are looking at adding at least 10 to 12 more cities in the next 2 to 3 years uh, you know and ultimately we present in 20 to 25 cities uh, by 2026 uh, you know we have we have kind of uh, we are engaging with uh, our partners uh, on a deep touch model uh, you know as i said that we like uh, listening to them so that uh, we are in sync with what the uh, needs of the market are and clearly you know our ambition is to you know but first maintain our leadership on the audience side uh, you know secondly provide uh, the best options for users uh, to kind of see and uh, thirdly also attain uh, you know leadership in all these markets on revenue in the next two to three years uh, thank you amit and ankita for taking the time out and dropping by to have this conversation with us and also sharing your deep insights and perspectives on the direction of the tier 2 market so far as property is concerned and also on expansion plans of housing.com in these growth markets thank you so much thanks gorov thanks amit Property owners across India have to pay property tax on the property owned to the municipal corporation in that locality. This tax is collected used by the corporation for building the city infrastructure, providing public amenities and utility services. It is mandatory for everyone to pay the property tax out of the exemptions granted by the government. Failure to pay a property tax will result in severe penalties. Note that taking certain steps can help you save on property tax to be paid. Know about the tax rules in the place that you live in and any local law that has been implemented. This will give you an idea on where the money is being used and if there is any incentive that has been given to you. Property tax card is issued by the state government and has all details regarding your property. Study it completely and check if contents mentioned on it are the same as the ones which are there on the original property documents that are in your possession. If there is a mismatch between the two, there will also be a difference in the property tax that is levied and what actually should be. People staying in independent homes or bungalows should note that any changes to the structure can invite more property tax. So, unnecessary structural changes should be avoided and to keep property tax low, no changes should be made. State governments offer rebates to property owners for paying property tax before the deadline. The rebates offered vary from state to state. For instance, Greater Chennai Corporation offers Chennai property tax rebate to citizens who pay within 30 days from the beginning of the half year, with April being the beginning of half year. That's it from us for this episode. We shall be back again with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com with information and insights on the real estate industry. Take care and stay safe.